Nathan, so I'm going to talk about why I don't use the frozen foods. And uh, it's sort of like a topic I don't really like to talk about, and I don't think many fish keepers do. But I think it's one that when it happens, we should take full responsibility for what we're responsible for and make changes, which is part of being responsible anyway. So I have had issues with my platy stacker starting when I moved home. Um, they started getting, well, it was about a month afterwards, I think, my la- oldest female, um, la- well, she was starting to get very large and I wasn't sure what it was. So eventually she did actually die. Um, and I wasn't quite sure what it was, but always whenever a fish dies that hasn't reasonably decayed, I will work out why. And by working out why, that does mean actually doing a dissection. Um, my familiarity with catfish anatomy hit and miss depending on the taxa. Um, but this, I was thinking, gosh, this fish is large. I've never heard of them breeding. I doubt it's eggs. But when I opened up, um, I'll just say a warning here. These photos, if you don't like photos of dead fish or anything like that, don't look. Um, but as you can see, there are eggs. Um, so my female developed eggs. Um, after dying. So I have assumed egg bound and my second female did it a few weeks after my second more mature female did it. I do have one male in the tank but at that time I don't assume he was sexually mature. But these fish are naturally, as I've said in previous videos, they do travel between freshwater, brackish and sometimes possibly marine. So a breeding trigger could technically be moving from different hardness and a lot of people said that could be why but the second one they uh, well first time I was reducing their TDS um, and the water hardness down the second time I had moved it back up to normal tap water so so that there wasn't any changes and this female also had eggs, and these were a lot of eggs. Um, I didn't dissect the f- second female, but you can kind of see them on the abdomen. And if you know anything about platy stackers, they lay their eggs and then they have them hanging from their abdomen in on what's called cotyledons or cotyledons. I cannot remember. Um, so it was a bit of a mystery, and they were certainly egg bound. The se- I think the first female, I could definitely push the eggs out of, but I don't want to, hand spawning is risky. It involves, it could involve damaging organs. So I don't really want to do it too often. So it had been, well, I already had my younger female and my soon maturing male. And he was showing some interesting behavior anyway. So he was, um, show you a video of him clicking and I thought the tank was cracking but he was clicking away they do have an aggression like chirp so throughout this time when I was at uni I never really fed them frozen food because it was just well I fed them it but not as often I never feed bloodworm that is well known for causing constipation but in the move um frozen foods could have been defrosted and then re-frozen which gives time for bacteria anyway to grow and I stupidly didn't think about that um, but that's just an idea um, so then recently I fed well I was doing a little like you know fasting thing for both tanks this tank didn't need it so much so I gave them quite a bit of frozen food every few days de- well every day and that's when it happened again and if you look at the fish it is very weird um you can see gas well they were extremely bloated and i mean more bloated than the eggs were so both individuals 
So both individuals were larger. And I was thinking, well, firstly, I didn't find the female. I found the male floating. And I have, well, I work quite a lot. And when I work, I can be really tired when I get back. So I'll do a quick check over and feed them. But because I don't have many top donors, I don't usually check the top layers. And that's when I saw the female. So when I opened them up, you can see in their digestive tract, massive bubbles. There's the large bubble of the stomach. And then as you go along, there is bubbles within the actual intestines. The female also smelt horrifically. She must have died first, I assume. So then I, well, preventative for that. Well, it was obviously some sort of constipation. They don't generally go to the surface to suck in air. So I have several theories about this, but firstly, I got talking to someone else that ke or kept or keeps aspirin a day and is really good on them. And he told me, what were you feeding? So I gave the list of things I was feeding, Rapashi. And he said, don't feed them um, frozen food. That's what got his amarella. And that made me think, maybe that's what the first lot it got the first lot because yes they had eggs but it would be even more exaggerated if they had constipation and bloodworm is known for constipation i don't use bloodworm said i use tubiflex whether it was defrosted moving to the house and then it grew bacteria but in the gut the bacteria could have even created the gas bubbles so I think it's always important to make changes, so I definitely won't be feeding frozen food. And I'm a bit sceptical about live foods now. I might, I am going to try just breed a colony of Neocardinia, I think, um, which also gives them the entertainment, or not entertainment, but chasing behaviour. And the water perimeters, I have sort of undetectable nitrates as far as my test kit goes. I have no nitrates in the tap. I, well, no detectable nitrates. I also had zero ammonia, zero nitrites. Um, the TDS hasn't changed because I've been living here, I think around a month now. And the only difference was I was feeding them frozen food study and that was the only food they had available to them because I, I'm sure they have a preference. I know they like the smelliest food. And I had always noticed them get larger and I was thinking, oh, this is the female. Well, it was always the females developing eggs. Although catfish are generally greedy and they do get big bellies. They, um, anyone who's had catfish has seen them where they get so fat, they sort of sit on their side. So it's not unusual for catfish to have big bellies. So I kind of thought, oh, that's normal. So... I'm definitely going to look into diet, especially um, focusing on fashion, easy to digest foods. And in the wild, yes, they're digesting invertebrates, but they're digesting live vertebrate, invertebrates. So I assume a lot of it won't, well, the bacteria that could grow while the live, um, the frozen food was, di um, while the frozen food was um, defrosting. Um, and... They probably, they probably would rarely eat bloodworm specifically. And a lot of people love bloodworm. I personally don't, and I've stopped feeding it a while ago. I have seen other reactions to frozen food. Um, a lot of people have noticed it with other fish that are causing bloat, um, and whether it is the bacteria itself. So I never fed bloodworm because Firstly, people do gain random allergic reactions to the proteins on the sort of casing exoskeleton, maybe, of bloodworm. So that's why I don't feed any fish bloodworm. Um, also, the fact it's difficult to digest that casing often. And I find it just, it's kind of dirty, but to be honest, so is Tubiflex. Um, but Tubiflex is an analid, a lot easier to digest. Um, and in the wild, they would eat a whole mixture of things. So in captivity, yeah, 
Another thing, a lot of people say, oh, you could prevent it with peas and stuff. I ain't get, no fatty stackers is going to get peas down them. There's a courgette in there and they have paid no attention to that. If they're not going to pay attention to courgette, they're not going to pay attention to peas. Probably the closest laxative I could get is to, to well, get in them is with Ashley Soil and Cream. Would I add salt to the water? Firstly, well, most of, none of these fish are salt tolerant. The platystachys are, but when you're travelling between estuarine and freshwater, even to marine, it is a very gradual process. You're not doing it in days, you're probably doing it in sort of weeks, months, depending on why they're migrating and stuff like that. And I don't think salt is that much of a laxative. Yes, it has osmoregularity, affects osmoregularity, but is it going to reach the digestive tract? I'm not entirely sure. So you can see the gas bubbles were very large. And I think, yeah. So what I did was I ensured first that it's something I could work on quickly. Or, well, firstly, test the water perimeters, as always, and be honest to myself about whether it was realistically I could replace them. Because if they were bad water perimeters, I'd want to sort out that first before I spent a load of money on new ones. So then I also, I have different diets to feed them. I can feed them with a whole range of things. They can have a Pashi bottom scratcher. And Pashi is very easy to digest. It's a powder, so it's easier to break down um, for them. So I can deal with it. So uh, I looked into oxygen and I've had a lot of flow in that tank anyway. And I've got two externals. I've got the, well, the, I use the airstone just to get a bit more surface turnover because these tend to go down. And I do want the power head in there. So I did replace them. I didn't replace all of them because I was only allowed to get two. So I got two females. Um, they are mature and they are actually the same batch because they're from the same shop I bought the others. I sadly couldn't get a male because they always seem to have more females. Um, and I am keeping an eye on them. I am making sure they're feeding and I am keeping an eye on their um, stomach and abdomen. And I am going to look into other diets as well. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any ideas or discussion points on this, um, and also, it does, it's other fish that do seem to have reactions as well. So maybe frozen food isn't the brilliant thing that it seems to be. Um, I really want to try breeding that neocardinia in the other tanks. Um, and maybe Daphna outside. Um, but I'll see really. Um, and I don't think frozen food is the most sustainable option really. Like money wise, and my knife fish doesn't even like he feeds on other things, so it's not like they're only gonna feed on frozen. No, and if I get another knife fish, well, he's not true, he's you know, Mr. Snigari. If I get other knife fish, I can give them live because they're probably more likely to feed on live, and the pashi smells a lot anyway. So, thank you for watching. I'm going to try and make more videos. Um, and I'll have to see how busy I am in the future as well because I start uni in a few weeks. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching.